Welcome to your UA Light Celestial Insight. Welcome to the channel. We come into April in the middle of Aries season, settling into the new year and new beginnings in personal and professional evolution, especially after having survived notoriously torturous astrology that brought up quite a lot of spiritual, mental, and emotional triggers, confusion, karmic conflicts, and tests of spiritual and emotional mastery, and really important closures of some karmic cycles and relationships in March to now, right? All for a new beginning. So if you're new here or even still processing just why last month felt like such an emotional roller coaster and why the energy feels so different now, definitely take a look at last month's astrology forecasts, the video posted on this channel on Saturn and Pisces and Pluto and Aquarius transits, and the recent video about the Aries new moon here on the channel for your astrological breakdowns so that you can understand, right? But Saturn, Pluto, and Mars changing signs, the really potent new and full moon astrology, and the continued concentration of celestial bodies in the signs of self-empowerment, relationships, money, technology, and creative action have all kicked off an energetic shift for getting clear on what actionable steps and personal professional relationships and resources can help you meet certain goals and can help you materialize certain dreams for the future. After an emotional march, <laughs> April is refreshing and filled with opportunity while still relationship focused and requiring a mindfulness in your self assertion and in your work on long term goals, right? Due to a couple of things due to Saturn and Pisces, due to Mars being in Cancer the whole month, due to Mercury in Taurus and Mercury retrograde beginning this month, and the begin of a new eclipse season with us beginning the month with a full moon in Libra on the 6th, and then us having a total new moon solar eclipse in the critical last degree of Aries. Okay, so this is all huge, huge, huge in terms of new energy for the month after being in a very long Saturnian age, after having Mars in Gemini for seven months, after having Pluto in Capricorn for 20 years, right? So in a nutshell, April is really a month to manifest and align with your highest soul purpose through a few things, through mindful action, mindful self-assertion in relationships, and through healing self-worth for optimal net worth, okay? And this is emphasized by the fact that we are beginning the month with Mars entering into cancer, right? After seven months of being in Gemini and having made these chaotic squares with Neptune, right? And when Mars enters into cancer at the beginning of the month, it's trining Saturn in Pisces, right? The planet of karmic lessons and maturity. And it's essentially asking us how we will implement the lessons from Mars and Gemini in general and from the Neptune and Mars squares and all of the lessons from the previous 15 years Saturnian age. Mars and Gemini and its squares with Neptune and Pisces were really to teach us about the power of restraint, about the tactics of fighting with facts versus reckless emotions, and about taking strategic and divinely timed action to get your highest outcomes if you're in tricky emotional dynamics where your livelihood could be on the line. It was all about the lesson of how strategic smart planning and restrained action can actually put you a hundred steps ahead in competition or help you outsmart a situation where there may be emotional manipulation involved or even deception, right? And so they were 
also about tests of emotional and spiritual self-mastery. They were about tests of self-confidence and your convictions when you're faced with things like deception or trickery or blocks and uncertainty about whether you spiral into victimhood or doubt your power and your visions and your goals, or whether you have an ability to zoom out, compartmentalize, do your emotional alchemy, right? And then direct your energy efficiently to problem solve. And Pluto's entry into Aquarius plus Saturn and Pisces trine with Mars and Cancer while it sextiles the North Node in Taurus is essentially about the importance of having mastered these lessons and skills so that you can be empowered and commit to concentrated, slow efforts in your goals so that you can accept any delays, right, in instant gratification or results and really maximize the opportunities, connections, and resources like new technologies and insights, right, that are being placed in your path due to Jupiter and Aries, Mercury and Venus traveling through Aries, through Aries and Taurus, well, including Aries because Aries is in Aries, and um, also Uranus and the North Node in Taurus, right? So Mercury and Venus traveling through Aries and Taurus is going to hit up connections with Uranus, with the North Node in Taurus, and with, uh, you know, asteroids like Eris and um, more, right? This astrology of April is all about new relationships, contracts, professional opportunities, and technologies appearing now in divine timing, right? For you to take projects and businesses to the next level, for you to newly launch or initiate certain visionary ideas, and to even relaunch certain things with a renewed vision and strategy now for success. And for some of you, it's about strengthening some personal and professional relationships based on being able to renegotiate the contractual terms and dynamics to reflect your personal evolution or the evolution of a business's brand. But for some of you, it symbolizes um, important closures and endings of personal and professional relationships based on your personal and um, sort of professional evolution with regards to what it is that you envision for your success. For some of you, this astrology symbolizes matriculation in educational programs, right? Um, and upcoming learning and teaching and speaking opportunities. And for the collective as a whole, given that we have um, the sun and Mercury and Venus traveling through Taurus, the astrology is really about mindfulness and finances and experimentation with new technologies and social media, given that Jupiter is in Aries and Pluto is in Aquarius. And as a result, we are seeing lots of changes in the banking and fintech industries, right? Highlighted in society and also seeing that most media conglomerates have released new products and will continue to transform in ways that will change how we all interact with social media, marketing, and sales channels to make a living and maintain relationships, okay? And Mars and Cancer definitely means being slowed down. Right? and perhaps emotional battles or frustration. And it can be a recipe for holding grudges and avoiding confrontation or problems and even stewing in emotions and acting passive aggressively. Right, And so the advice for navigating this energy of April, especially the Mars um, in Cancer trying with Saturn, is to really recognize any signs of being avoidant and resolving any issues or any urges to sulk in victimhood or defeat with anything that you're dealing with or resolving, right? Saturn in Pisces is all about asking us to take our time, right? And to lay foundations. So take time to be mindful and emotionally grounded, mature, and confident in your actions, responses, 
and negotiations. Seek and take advantage of expert advice and support systems, right? And also be aware of any emotional eating and spending that could spike when feeling stressed, given that Mars rules the stomach and indulgent behaviors can spike when Mercury, Venus, and the sun are all moving through Taurus, right? And um, making squares, right, with Pluto in Aquarius. And we also have a full moon in Libra, right? So this is all Venusian energy that is about indulgent behavior sometimes, right? So Saturn in Pisces is about emotional control and responsibility with vices additionally, right? While this astrology is also sort of encouraging financial control because financial control could allow you to actually have money that you need to invest in things that support your goals as um, resources and connections could really magically appear for you with all the lucky transits this month, right? So be mindful about investments in in general. And remember that April is a month to manifest and align with your highest soul purpose through mindful action, mindful self-assertion in relationships, and taking advantage of all of the resources that will be appearing in like divine timing and in divine alignment for you this month. So another thing is really important and this astrology is also really spotlighting how healing self-worth for optimal net worth is really key, right? And this is for a few reasons. Jupiter conjuncted Chiron in Aries, right? And is in still a sort of looming um, conjunction. And this was such a huge, huge transit um, that was a part of the sort of emotional roller coaster astrology of March and it really triggered emotional wounds about relationships and self-confidence and self-assertion right for these sorts of wounds to be healed and Mars and cancer may also do the same in terms of placing emotional frustrations in your path and supportive relationships in your path right and so a conscious awareness of your core emotional responses and your core sort of relational dynamics and even core wounds related to any sort of dysfunctional emotional responses or relational dynamics are really important to know because they could potentially hinder or really, really, um, support you in maximizing the potential of the resources and supportive relationships that will be placed in your path this month. And so Mars in Cancer could absolutely trigger wounds related to your core familial dynamics and any inner child wounds. They could absolutely trigger wounds related to, um, having suffered any emotional and psychological abuse or unfairness and injustice in relationships, right? Um, These things you may find rearing their head, right? And being reflected in your attachment styles or your ability to maturely resolve conflict or, um, negotiate on your behalf and in your best interest in a confident way, right? Um, or to be able to resolve negotiations and conflicts in a way where you are doing it in an emotionally healthy way and where you're able to stick to the facts and not be um, really triggered and led astray and distracted by any sort of emotional triggering right? Mars and Cancer can really offer an opportunity to do shadow work and healing of core family and relationship wounds, emotional responses, 
and any sort of um, insecure or dysfunctional attachment and relational styles, right? It can really offer an opportunity to do shadow work around issues in personal empowerment and discernments in relationships so that a new chapter of personal empowerment and relationship harmony and career success begins, okay? And these are all the things that influence self-worth and that then influence net worth, okay? And in terms of these energies in general, the 2023 lunar and solar eclipse seasons will be continuing to highlight these sort of lessons, right? So, This eclipse season that we're beginning is about the polarities of Aries versus Libra and the polarities of Taurus versus Scorpio. I'll definitely do more, um, do a video that explains more about our eclipse season, but we're beginning and kicking off eclipse season and the particular eclipse lessons this month. So in a nutshell, Right, both the polarities of Aries versus Libra and Taurus versus Scorpio center on these themes of fairness, your values, and your valuables and shared assets within relationships. Right, it highlights emotional and ethical values that inform or inspire your relationships, the shared valuables or assets that cohere a relationship, and how reciprocity fairness and harmony are maintained and when we break that down even more of course the emotional and ethical values of the individuals have a direct effect on how reciprocity fairness and harmony are shaped and maintained related to emotions and assets and relationships and further The emotional and ethical values of individuals are, of course, shaped by their sense of self-worth, empowerment, confidence, and self-security, or insecurity even, and their attachment styles and emotional responses that are informed by our core wounding and upbringing in our relationships and our familial history. Okay, so that is a deep, deep, deep dive (laughs) really quickly on the importance of this theme of healing self-worth for optimal net worth in the month of April and beyond, given that the sort of eclipse polarities will be continuing to highlight these, right? So Neptune and Mars square, the Jupiter and Aries transit has been making these issues super visible for the collective and really raising the stakes for healing these issues, right? Especially because Jupiter is that planet of blessings and about really um, expanding and growing and, and emphasizing whatever it is that it touches for better or worse, right? And so things like Jupiter's conjunction with Chiron was about highlighting wounds and relational patterns while Cancer, uh, Mars and Cancer is also coming in to continue offer an, off- an opportunity to heal those kinds of things. And then the sun making a conjunction with Jupiter this month is also about how all of these things will impact our future in an important way, right? In terms of the importance of having a healthy sense of self and healthy, empowering relationship dynamics and how these will influence success in powerful ways, right? And the astrology this month is truly just great for problem solving and building supportive working relationships, building supportive um, sort of foundational systems um, for whatever it is that you do for a living, right? If you don't get in your own way, okay? And so Mercury is going to be traveling through Taurus throughout the whole month of April, um, while Venus will also travel through Taurus and and through Gemini, and we'll have Mercury um, retrograde 
beginning this month as well. And so these particular movements are all about reassessing our relationships and our relationship patterns so that we get the most value out of our resources and our relationships, okay? And Pluto in Aquarius is in the mix now and its influence is also beginning to express itself in personal life circumstances, right? Where there is a potential for powerful personal and professional empowered change through strategic partnership, right? Pluto in Aquarius and Saturn in Pisces can represent powerful people or knowledge is showing up in your lives to support you in some area of your life, right? And while all of the astrology here um, is also uh, related in this way, Venus is also exalted in Taurus and entering into Gemini, which is also about mindful investment in self-satisfying and mutually beneficial partnerships, right? And a mindful use of mutual aid and expert advice. Like that is what Pluto and Aquarius, Saturn and Pisces, and Venus being in Taurus and Gemini is all about, okay? Negotiating your best interests, working smarter, um, using facts, not taking crumbs or staying in relationships where there is no fear of reciprocity, and coming into contact with more aligned relationships and resources, okay? But again, Mars is going to be in the mix and is going to continue to ask, right? Will you let victimhood and the sort of trauma from abuse steal your power? Will you self-sabotage? Will you... Um, power in the face of conflict um, or, or self-doubt, right? Or will you really get in the ring, right? And see that things didn't just happen to you, but for you, right? They gave you important oppositional knowledge um, so that you can outsmart and level up <laughs> in every way, personally and professionally, right? So take a moment to subscribe and like this video if you haven't already, and then click the timestamp to get your personalized astrology, horoscope, and tarot, psychic, spiritual guidance and advice for the month of April. Check these out according to your sun, moon, or rising sign, and whether or not you have any particular stelliums in your chart in terms of having three planets or more in a particular sign. Dear Aries, happy Aries season and happy birthday to those of you who are celebrating this month. This is such a huge month for you all. There is an eclipse happening in your sign, full moon in your sister's sign, and Jupiter in your first house and the sun, while the sun, Mercury, and Venus will also travel through your money houses, right? And so... We recently just sort of transitioned out of this huge Saturnian age influence that was really about a lot of hardships and um, sort of challenges for you in terms of reaching certain milestones and goals in your career and your finances, right? And this month is really about a sort of major shift and kind of breakthrough for many of you. Um, and it's like the seeds that you have planted and watered in your career have had varying amounts of success over the last 10 plus years, right? And that has been for a number of reasons, right? Some things that you had hopes for, you know, were put on hold or stalled and some were averted, right? Um, some were uh, manipulated, some crashed and burned, right? But there was really a divine sort of lesson in all of it. And it was for you to really clarify your core values, to really understand any limited visions of your potential that you had and any codependent or limited networks and relationships and partnerships that you also had, right? And how these were all really reflective of a sort of fractured self concept and low sense of self-worth and even reflective of certain loyalties that will ultimately 
lead you nowhere and certainly not toward your ability to embody your full potential. For some of you, you may still be in these scenarios, right? And experiencing stagnation and it being important for you to really clear karma and to really get clarity about any sort of delusions or illusions that you've been living in. For others of you, um, a lot of rejections and divine detours were just that, right? Um, protection and divine detours, right? A part of an accelerated path or spiritual growth that was meant to really align you with a unique higher vision and higher knowledge, right? Of how to materialize these unique higher visions that really you could only attain <laughs> through trial and error, button your head a few times, right? But ultimately being able to then see your strength, right? And taking temporary losses, right, for higher lessons. And sometimes that's the only way that you all learn, but um, sometimes that's actually the best way to learn. Um, and so you have all come to see the potential limitation and meanings of these divine detours in your professional ventures. And especially being able to see certain professional and even familial and romantic relationships with more clarity now in a way that really gives you some resolution for how you will revamp your life, renegotiate, um, and manage your personal and professional and entrepreneurial life in a way that really honors you, that honors your independence, your new sense of identity and self-worth, and truly your ownership and benefit from everything that you offer and bring to the table. Everything that I mentioned in the collective astrology applies keenly for you, every bit of it. Okay. And this month's astrology is really set up to bless you, your new ventures, and also any old ones that you've revamped or reimagined to create some long-term success for you, right? And, you know, with the use of new media and sales channels and really taking advantage of your discernment <laughs> to select key partnerships, right, to work with, um, key networks or key resources, right, to support your ideas and creations and the dissemination of them, um, you could really reach new heights from here forward, right? And your reach, your net worth and success could really rise to heights beyond or rather really in par with ambitious dreams that you have, right? Where you are blazing a trail and the cards definitely reflect the stars, right? And that the focus for you this month is, you know, this really goodness being so, so in touch and, um, favored by this sort of celestial bodies and the energy this month, um, it's really highlighting a lot of heightened creative and psychic ability and a sort of emotional and spiritual energetic upgrade, which is like absolutely what Jupiter and the eclipse is doing as it is sort of like uh, shooting huge uh, bursts of energy in your first house. Right. Um, and it's about blessing you with clarity and faded support support for decision making and for problem solving any sort of professional practical and money matters right and if you look here we have the goddess of the moon card and the seven of cups in reverse this is also emphasizing how this clarity is arriving due to the fact that that neptune and mars square is kind of clearing clearing away any sort of confusion um and also, you know, all of this activity in your first house, right? These eclipses and Jupiter's conjunctions that it is making, right? Really blessing you. Um, if you look closely at this card, the goddess of the moon card, there's actually a sort of figure um, that is sort of up in the clouds. And that is also sort of representative of this overall message about faded helpers and faded resources really appearing for you. Um, 
this month and there's something here about research right and and find and letting your your instincts and your intuition really lead you to find lock and key information um that was previously unknown to you right um and that really helps you. It could be you finding the right people so that you can delegate or outsource the task, right, to an expert. Um, and also finding information, all of it, helping you to work smarter, to develop some sort of proper system um, or something, right, that gives you an extra boost of confidence to not give up on a project or a long-term goal, maybe after feeling defeated from not seeing results, right, after putting in a lot of hard work. But the message is absolutely for you to trust any instincts that you have and to know that if you do anything related to spirituality, music, astrology, wellness, um, your projects will be blessed this month and going forward, right? Um, so long as you really take advantage um, and explore, right? And, and make use of any sort of faded discoveries, faded resources, and your sort of psychic insights, right? In terms of the cards, right? We have the five of swords in reverse here illuminating your past and we have the queen of pentacles reverse and the ten of wands here as the cards that are representing particular challenges that you could have this month and given that um we have a lot of activity in your second house of money um this could also be speaking to that in terms of potentially experiencing some money challenges or restrictions this month that hinder your ability to complete something in a particular time frame that you desired, right? You know, y'all, you all like things to get done quickly, right? Whenever you see the vision and the potential and the possibility of something, it's like, okay, let's get it, let's get it done, right? And so, you could experience some money challenges or restrictions that really hinder your ability to complete something as fast as you would like or in a desired time frame. But your advice is not to give up, right? Because it will be resolved by the end of the month. Definitely heed the, the advice that was stated in the collective astrology to not get down or feel defeated by anything, right? Um, because things are going to be resolved for you by the end of the month. Seek support. Ask experts and use your money wisely. Do not let any sort of um, uh, emotional triggers or disruptions or just anything really lead you into any sort of um, emotional spiral, right? And also understand that certain, um, for you all in particular, Aries, it's important for you all to know that Challenges is actually the way that the divine blesses you because through challenges and problem solving, you actually get the upper hand in being able to innovate and to have so much knowledge um, and even to build networks of experts that you seek answers from, right? <laughs> you end up having all of these things at your disposal um, and that then combined with your sort of creative and intuitive insight actually puts you ahead, right? And kind of gives you an upper hand. So it's important for you to understand your power, to understand that divine does not give you anything that you cannot handle and that they really do it um, to build your strength and knowledge. So seek support, use your money wisely, do not overspend um, and make peace with your path and your past. Really heal your self-worth for optimal net worth. Um, this astrology is absolutely also speaking to the fact that you all are ending some dysfunctional relationships this month and perhaps coming out of isolation, um, given that Venus is moving into Gemini, right? This is about being a bit more social, um, but... Moreover, it's about a really sort of smart and advantageous use of social media, given that you now have um, Pluto in your 11th house that is about media, that is about your networks, right? It's about more empowered and aligned relationships. Um, 
that you are coming out of isolation for, right? <laughs> um, but absolutely transforming relationships and transforming the ways that you wield and embody your authority in relationships, right? And when you look at the cards here in this bottom row, right, it's about your ultimate sort of outcomes for this month being the door to value, right? Um, and just really being blessed by making smart money decisions and uh, wise relationship decisions, including ending and starting certain new relationships and partnerships. And um, just having, having favor, having favor by the divine this month. Okay, so I want to read this affirmation from the door to value card for you okay and the, the door to value card reads it is all about new beginnings in finance or career okay so it shows a door with a gold coin right opening to a place filled with light and bright potential and money and coins and jewels flying toward you through the open door revealing a gold city beyond and so it really is about the potential for exciting new beginnings expansions where work or money are concerned new opportunity things falling into place um where there are opportunities that are unexpected or where it's something that you've been working toward for quite a while, right? And so know that anything you value may be open to you now. Remain conscious and creative and get ready to step through the door. Okay, Aries, to wrap up your reading, we have some additional UA light celestial insight in the form of an angel number message. That is another way that psychic advice comes through for you and that always magically aligns with the stars and the cards, okay? And so to wrap up your reading, your angel number message is 755. And the number seven relates to the esoteric and mystical. It relates to spiritual awakening and development. It relates to persistence of purpose and determination, discernment and positive intentions, inner knowing and understanding others. It relates to empathic and psychic abilities and education and learning. And number five is all about positive life choices and important changes. It's about your imagination and curiosity, your intelligence, and life lessons learned through experience. Wow. Courage and being courageous. Adaptability and versatility, motivation, and auspicious opportunities. Angel number 755 is a message to stay strong in the conviction of your choices and to do what is right for you. Do not allow others' opinions, judgments, or pressure to sway you off your course. Do not buy into someone else's idea of who and what you should be. Discern for yourself as it's time for you to take your own power back and do what is right for you. Listen to your true feelings and emotions and know what is right for you and your life. And stay true to yourself. Angel number 755 brings a message from the angels, the angels and your spirit team that you are about to go through changes that will enrich you either physically, emotionally, spiritually, or intellectually. And I'm going to add financially, given that we have the door to value card and so many transits going through your money houses. And so it will enrich you in all of these ways. It will be a liberating and enlightening time for you and your angels, your spirit guides rejoice with you. Know that they are with you, encouraging and supporting you along your path that is absolutely reflected in that goddess of the moon card, right? And so it says, live a life of amazing discoveries, wonders, experiences, and achievements. Open yourself up to the world around you and your capacity to relish it. 
Ashe. <laughs> that is so beautiful and aligned. And that is UA Light Celestial Insight. I get these channeled angel numbers at the top of your reading and I scribble them down and then I wait until the end of your reading to read them for you and read them myself <laughs> and to see the magical ways that spirit speaks to you across dimensions in all of these ways to hone in on these key messages. So Aries, I hope that this is an incredible time for you and that you can stay aligned with your power. Definitely like this video, subscribe to the channel, share this message, and check out all of the other remaining videos on the channel. We're a new channel and the messages have all been so incredibly empowering and supportive and encouraging for you um, with this particular moment in time in mind. So those messages offer additional encouragement and strategic advice. So definitely check those out and thank you for watching. Hello Taurus, the beloved bull collective. Welcome to the channel and happy birthday to those of you who will be celebrating in April. April always includes the transition from Aries season into Taurus season. And so the April astrology is actually really big for you as it will feature quite a lot of activity in your sign from the sun, Mercury, Venus, the North Node, and Uranus all being there. And you will have Mercury retrograde in your sign. And then Venus also moving into your house of money and your personal values in the middle of the month. And the sort of major theme for you for April 2023 in terms of the astrology and your sort of psychic insights are around this theme of mental clarity, mental health, and mindfulness in your connections, given all of these particular astrology deeds that I just mentioned, right? A lot of big activity in Aries is the focus before moving into um, Taurus season. And it's really about sparking a journey of more mindfulness in your associations and relationships in all areas of your life, but especially professionally as you have been continuing to widen your reach, your connections, and you know efforts to secure public success in your industry right and whatever it is through publishing through online channels and through partnerships so much of the astrology has been about a lot of social and external focus professional activity for you all and since the aries uh, new moon you have been getting clarity on where you stand with some authority figures in your industry, uh, where you stand with certain social groups and demographics, and clarity on who you can and can't trust, and clarity on a practical strategy for reaching some dreams and goals and milestones. And, um, you know, it's reflected in the cards here too, right? Where they speak of you really breaking conventions or barriers and having been making an effort to really use your platform or influence in ways to draw attention to um, causes or undeserved underserved or marginalized groups. It also speaks of you intentionally putting yourself in diverse spaces where people of your background are not usually found, right? You really sort of infiltrating and integrating spaces intentionally for the learning experience and for pushing you and others out of, you know, comfort zones to interact across difference, but also even for exposure in terms of you um, traveling and trying to intentionally expand your market 
page. And the cards and stars really ask you to move from a space of authenticity to attract abundance and the right kind of connections, but also to perhaps even take a break from any external appearances and travel this month for deepening your self-love and rest and healing. This Six of Wands in particular is walking in the dark, representing a public figure who may need time out, right? And that's really what all of the activity in Aries is about for you, because that is your 12th house of mental health, of taking time for um for rest and for tending to your interior emotional world and any sort of emotional issues, right? And 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 time with your subconscious, right? And with your uh personal creativity, right? And so the ace of cups and the nine of cups here are also sort of emphasizing this message of rejuvenation, right? And, you know, this being a time that is really good for deeper self-discovery, self-study, um, and mastery that will help the success of any projects, right? Especially any projects that have to deal with music, psychology, healing arts, uh, or even your public communications. And, there are a few things here, right? Um, when I pulled out the first card, this uh, first card is about the sacral chakra and it's in reverse here. And it's about issues with intimacy, creativity, but even boundaries, right? And it could be about feeling torn about, you know, needing to rest due to, you know, pressure around social or professional opportunities, you know, that are continuing to be offered to you or that you see as like, um, potential, something to to act on, right? While you may even be on the brink of exhaustion, right? Um, and so with the judgment and the moon here as well, there is definitely a message to really trust your gut, pay attention to your body. And, you know, it Maybe being a good idea to choose to say no or opt out of something, maybe some sort of work opportunity, collaboration, invite, or even a love or reconciliation offer, right? Either due to the need to rest or due to a gut instinct that a relationship or a connection or something is just not in your best interest. I got that pretty clearly. Um, the Six of Wands could absolutely also be about someone trying to get your attention this month. Um, pay attention to your instincts. Just really pay attention to your instincts in your body. And pay attention to instincts with regards to any offers this month in any scenario where you feel like someone could be trying to rush you to make a decision about something or where someone is overstepping a boundary that you express. This could be about someone being interested in getting your attention, um, maybe to even ride your coattails. Um, that's one thing I'm also getting from the Six of Wands or even about you needing to reevaluate this practice if you are the person who is just mixing and connecting from a space of desperation, greed, a frantic attention seeking, or just simply saying yes to every opportunity that comes your way, right? In a way that could be directionless or without depth or without some sort of authentic aligned intention or a sense of values. And this is a message that also came through in last month's reading as well. So definitely take a look at the March horoscopes and readings and the other messages here on this channel. That was one message that came through that could resonate with just a certain subset of the Taurus Collective, right? Take what applies to you. But in general, with Mercury retrograde in your sign and Venus 
in your sign and then moving in your second house of values and money, there's a very clear message here about reassessing your relationships, any relationship patterns, reassessing your true north, and your tactics of reaching it. And ultimately, definitely take time to just realign Get in touch with your true intentions and rest if you need to, because there is no shortage of opportunities for success and um, income earning potential for you with regards to the stars. Absolutely, you have been and will continue to be blessed. We have the Nine of Cups here, right? So it's absolutely about um, fulfilling dreams, reaching goals, and it just being really important that you are emotionally and um, mentally and psychologically in a good space, rested, recharged, and just really in touch with what it is that you truly want and the best way to get it, right? So we're going to wrap up your reading with your angel number message that is aligned specifically for you. Your angel number message is 855. And so this reads, number eight is about self-confidence. It's about personal power and authority. It's about giving and receiving truth and integrity, reality, dependability, and self-reliance, and manifesting positive abundance. Eight relates to karma, and five relates to auspicious new opportunities, but also choices and decisions and major life changes. It's absolutely about learning life lessons through experience, being adaptable and versatile and resourceful. And it's about individuality, personal freedom, fun and adventure. I've mentioned that travel has absolutely been on the cards and this sort of resonates absolutely with what I was picking up in the cards about you sort of intentionally placing yourself in new spaces, right? Being adaptable and uh, versatile and just really trying things on. So angel number 855 brings a message to be aware of the coincidences and any synchronicities appearing in your life at this time because they are presenting to guide and assist you and also to bring you opportunities that will advance you along your path. Synchronicity links your outer and inner worlds in a way that absolutely make clear the hidden force or order in the universe. Some things are just meant to happen. Yes, so this is absolutely what I'm getting, right? It's important for you to set intentions about what you want. You don't have to necessarily take any and every opportunity that is offered to you if it is not in alignment because the ones that are for you won't miss you. Angel number 855 suggests that positive changes are taking place with regards to your income earning capacities, your career, and the financial aspects of your life. Trust these changes will bring about wonderful outcomes and results that will ensure a continued flow of abundance in your life. This number signifies that you are heading towards substantial changes. And although the changes may seem daunting to you right now, in time and with hindsight, you will recognize them to be blessings in disguise. And I'm getting that this is about things that you say no to just as much as the things that you say yes to. Okay, so angel number 855 is a message from your angels to remember you are well loved and supported by the universe. Hold on to your faith and trust as you go through any necessary changes. It says some restraints and constraints may need to be, be shed to enable a promotion or advancement of some sort. Okay, Taurus. So that is your horoscope and your tarot psychic insight, your UA light celestial insight for April 2023. Definitely check out the other videos here on the channel as they have had some similar messages to this, but also give additional insight and practical advice that could be really helpful for you at this point in time. 
in particular related to how your finances, your career, your networks, and transnational reach have been expanding. All right. So like this video and subscribe. And thank you so much for watching. Hello, dear Geminis. So your horoscope and psychic celestial insight theme for April 2023 is about creative reach, impact, and huge payback. Okay, so Aries and Taurus season are truly cosmically aligned to support you powerfully. If you look at the cards, it's all good news. It is all good news. We have the uh, man holding a coin here, door to personal healing and happiness, the Ten of Pentacles, um, and the Ten of Cups, the Wheel of Fortune, the Queen of Wands, and the Temple Path and Victory. And it is absolutely about how the recent planetary changes and the current positions of the celestial bodies are really aligned to support the release and success of any creative projects through sales and social media ch media channels and how now that we are out of that neptune and mars square and have um had the major movements from Pluto and Saturn ending that heavy Saturnian age that you are also ending um, or rather reaching the sort of completion of a very, very long spiritual journey and are sort of graduating in a sense, right? And it's just a really great time for you to experience major impact um, and success in your projects, right? So projects involving art, music, education, product manufacturing, foreign people, and foreign travel will be especially blessed during this time. You have a real opportunity to broaden your market reach and be enriched with knowledge and enriched financially <laughs> and set up for a new phase of success in your career. Any financial worries or worries about the success or reach of anything that you put out will be changing powerfully this month for you. And I mentioned that is due to um, Pluto moving into your ninth house and Venus moving into your sign this month while Mars is moving into your second house of money and where Mercury is now visible after having been invisible for a very long time. And so this, in addition to these incredible Jupiter conjunctions in the total eclipse in your 11th house of media and karmic blessings, is absolutely about... Um, any confident initiative and use of resources for your projects creating a lot of huge success for you, right? This could mean viral moments, viral sales, a big boost in sales, a big contract, um, an investor or a partnership or a payout or even a scholarship for a school or study abroad opportunity. Definitely expect great news and results, right? And these um, things in many ways are about this being a season of payback and rewards for your past efforts, but especially for all of the effort that you have put into your personal spiritual growth, right? And your dedication and your determination and you just receiving karmic blessings, through the success of your projects and anything that you release in the world, right? This is very much about a spiritual graduation for you. And so definitely like look your best and feel your best, put effort into your appearance and doing spiritual ritual and anything that helps you to feel confident um, and just be in a vibration of abundance and optimism and happiness. That is absolutely what these cards and the stars are all about for you. And so I want to um, also say that definitely take a look at the Jupiter and Aries reading. It speaks a bit about um, 
And in general, all of the readings for you, Gemini, have all been about you all being in this uh time of of spiritual tests by the universe you've had mars in your sign forever right it was retrograde and 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 moving direct right and it was it was all about um and, and making those squares with neptune right so it was all about spiritual tests right spiritual tests to um, grow your self-awareness, to grow your understanding of spirituality, to grow your psychic ability and your discernment, to essentially facilitate Christ conscious awakening for you in a very deep and powerful way, right? Um, and this is also reflected here in these cards, right? And so um, definitely we have the death card and the high priestess card and the ten of pentacles cards here right this is about incredible spiritual transformation and you being rewarded financially in some way this month through support and your confidence just really being a key player in you continuing to draw in abundance so for instance the temple path card here is all about spiritual purpose and support and it says receiving this card represents your own spiritual evolution and it says the winding path you are on leads to a blessed temple and a lovely garden symbolizing the spiritual destiny turn the page <laughs> that your soul has had in mind for this lifetime this card up right tells you that what you're going through is a part of your soul's process you are on your karmic path and heading in the right direction and the choices you make now are important for your personal growth and life lesson the lights around the temple represent the spirit world your ancestors friends, angels, and guides, all the loving spiritual helpers who long to assist you. Call upon them and be open to their wisdom and inspiration. This is a wonderful life-expanding time, so keep in mind your personal priorities as well as your spiritual connection. Following your higher intentions will help you move your life forward in dramatic ways, and connecting with spirit and your higher self will have a wonderful influence on all that you experience absolutely absolutely so i also want to read the victory card for you okay i had the page <laughs> okay it's about success and achievement and success being on its way and you having a sense of pride in the work that you have accomplished and what you've worked to accomplish, right? And the achievement may be a, a great outer success or it may be about a deep inner change, right? That you've been exerting a lot of effort toward. Enjoy the sense of accomplishment, but be careful not to rest on your laurels. People expect outer triumph to bring great changes, but often there may still be inner work to do. So let yourself be open to victory on every level now. And so, yes, I was absolutely getting the message that the general collective astrology message and sort of spiritual and psychological insights are really, really key for you all in particular as well, in addition to the Aries Collective. So definitely make sure that you check out the um, collective astrology message that is in this video. And I also want to wrap up this reading by reading your channeled angel number message that came through for you. UA Light Celestial Insight includes channeled uh, psychic messages from the cards and the stars in addition to specific channeled angel numbers. All right, so your angel number message is angel number 1010. Okay, and so one, the number one is all about new beginnings. It's about creation and creativity, motivation, progress, intuition and inspiration, happiness and positivity, initiative and assertiveness, attainment, achieving success and personal fulfillment. It reminds that we create our realities with our thoughts, beliefs and actions. And number zero represents potential and or choice. A spiritual journey, developing your spiritual aspects, listening to your intuition and higher self. 
eternity and infinity, oneness and wholeness, and the beginning point. It magnifies the influences of the numbers it appears with, and it relates to the God force and universal energies and source. All right, so absolutely, Neptune and Pisces and its squares with Mars in your sign have been about facilitating these particular kinds of awakenings and journeys for you. So angel number 1010 indicates that it is a time of personal development, spiritual awakening, and enlightenment. Keep your thoughts, focus, and intentions on your soul mission and life purpose, and your elevated vibrations will attract abundance and positive energies into your life. Use affirmations and maintain a positive attitude to draw towards you all that you need along your path. Trust your inner wisdom, intuition, and guidance from the angels and take positive action in the direction of your dreams and desires. Now, I just want to say, okay, I get these channeled angel numbers at the top of your message when I'm doing the astrology. And a lot of times, uh, right before I start to pull your cards. And so I just note them down and then I wait until the end of your readings to read these for you and for me, right? And they always just align. Okay. So I just wanted to let you know that. And in addition to this, um, the message that I got about this, right? is doubly reflected in the cards and in this angel number message here about like affirmations, optimism, looking and feeling your best and just doing all of these things, but then just creating your personal high vibration in order to maintain this good flow of abundance coming to you, right? Um, that's reflected here too. And so I also want to say subscribe to the channel and join us in our daily grace meditations. Um, these daily grace motivation meditations are absolutely about having, um, having you all join in together, um, to increase, you know, positive energies and vibration and to have a consistent sort of daily gratitude and motivation practice. So stick with me, kids. Stick with me, all right? <laughs> so angel number 1010 encourages you to keep your beliefs, your thoughts, and your mindset focused upon your spirituality and your life purpose as you are now creating your own reality. Engage in creative and positive endeavors and activities and use your personal skills and talents in a productive manner. Listen to the guidance from the angels in your intuition. And serve your soul mission with passion and enthusiasm. Pay attention to any intuitive thoughts and impressions as they are revealing answers to your prayers and providing guidance. Trust yourself, the angels, and the universal energies and take direction and action as guidance. Step out of your comfort zone and into the direction of your true desires and know that you will find success and happiness. All right. So great. Great. There's really nothing to say. I wish you all so much positivity um, and abundance for April. Um, I know it's been a tricky time for the Gemini Collective. So take it all in stride and keep going. Like this video and subscribe to this channel. And thank you for watching. Hello, dear Cancers. Happy April and Aries season and Taurus season. Your sort of theme for the month of April 2023 in terms of the cards and the stars is about you being the dark horse. And also this message about big rewards, rest, and recharge. Okay, so... Your finances and market reach continue to be blessed at this time, right? You have the sun and Jupiter in your house of career, while you have the sun, Venus, the North Node, Uranus, Mercury, all moving through your 11th house, right? And so it's all about travel, rewards, awards, and recognition in the public related to your product development entertainment, media, tech, 
writing, publishing, higher learning, spirituality, wellness, and financial growth. While it's also about balancing that with rest, recharging, and taking care of your mental health, given that we have Venus moving into your 12th house this month and Mars moving out of your 12th house into your first house that is all about how you uh, take care of your body and about um, in combination a mindfulness of balancing physical activity and attention to your sort of professional career responsibilities with your personal care, physical health and mental health, right? And so the cosmos really shine a light on, you know, rewards, like I said, this long journey that you've had um, in sort of art and entertainment, of spiritual initiation, deep learning, exploration, and self-mastery, and also healing from trauma, right? And how it brought you such a wealth of knowledge that you have continued to monetize and can continue to monetize, right? And you have reached goals and continue to create mass success from an ability to follow your instincts, but also to face your shadows and taboo topics and heal them and creatively embrace them and then transform them into relatable art where you capitalize off of your life lessons learned, your creativity, and your networks, and your market reach, and partnerships, and connections with moguls, mentors, and wise spiritual teachers, and teachings, right? And this is all reflected in the cards and the astrology. And with Venus in the 12th house, um, and with this action card and the garden and the gate card and with the emperor uh and the two of wands being in reverse and the seven of swords here i've been getting this message and if you look at the top two we have the goddess of the moon card and the woman holding a coin it's like it's telling this story of you having been a really dark horse in any competition in any industry and in general in your life, right? Where there, where even you are sort of reflecting, um, maybe even with a sense of disbelief, right? In your ability to accomplish certain dreams and goals that you have accomplished, right? And um, being awarded or even given honors that are typically not awarded to someone from your demographic or culture and you exceeding others' expectations and even your own expectations and you being a dark horse, right? And um, that is sort of the gist, that's the gist of your message, right? And it's like about you continuing to just go forward, doing what you do. I've kind of revealed your formula here a little bit with this reading, <laughs> but it's important for you to understand this as your superpower as you continue to go forward. You already know it, I'm sure, but there it is, right? Um, this astrology is also, and similar to last month's astrology and the psychic messages, is like it's continuing to come through that um, with with Mercury and the sun and Venus all being your 11th house, um, that is a lot of times about media, tech, sales, uh, marketing, sales channels, and then Saturn in your ninth house, that's about product development and even uh, like shipping and handling and all of those kinds of things. There's something here about restock and high sales and high demand with whatever services, products that you create or whatever it is that you offer. And um, that you could be experiencing um, maybe delays, restock issues, but also having those kinds of things resolved this month with regards to whatever it is that you do and offer being in high demand. <laughs> and, you know, in general, it's about you just continuing to um, prioritize and balance, right? And continuing on to offer your light and 
the healing, the unique way that you do to the world. All right. And so we're going to wrap up your reading with an angel number message that came through for you. And the angel number message that we got for you is 1330. 1330. Okay. And so this reads, one is about self-leadership and assertiveness, initiative, action, and progress. It's also about new beginnings and a fresh approach. It relates to new directions, striving forward and progress, and how you create your own reality with your thoughts, beliefs, and actions. Wow. And it brings its influences of optimism and joy, self-expression and communication, imagination and intelligence. It's about growth and expansion and the principles of increase, encouragement and assistance, talent and skills. And the way that this number is formed here, 1330, it's also about uh, 333, the ascended master number right and it's about how the ascended masters and your spiritual connection and intuition help you to focus on the divine spark within yourself and others and assist with manifesting your desires you have spiritual support you know helping you to find peace clarity and love within okay i'm also getting that yes it's important for you to continue to balance peace for clarity <laughs> all right and love within moving forward, right? So number three tells you that the ascended masters are around you, assisting when asked. I'm also getting to that the collective astrology and, and, and psychic channel messages really apply to, to the Cancer Collective as well with regards to um, being able to really have sort of faded divine support um, coming to your life with anything this month, right? Um, so zero relates to the energies of potential and choice and uh, spiritual development. And it represents the spiritual journey and highlights the uncertainties that that may entail. And so it says to listen to your intuition and higher self to continue to find all of your answers, right? And it's about this connection with with source, right? And and um, in general, this number asks you to surrender your goals and desires to spirit and ask for guidance in regards to what it is you want to manifest. The universe is aware of where you are at your life and wants to help and assist you along your path. It indicates that the Ascended Masters are working with you on your thought processes to enable you to make the highest and wisest choices. They are sending you positive energy to keep you from feeling discouraged and are also sending encouragement to stay focused on the true goals of your soul so that you are able to succeed with your life purpose and general life. Additionally, the Ascendant Masters may be offering you advice, guidance, and suggestions about your life's purpose if you are currently questioning your pathway. Pay attention to your thoughts, ideas, and insights as it's giving you information about next steps to take along your spiritual path. Any positive changes or projects you are considering right now will be well worth your while and you will be assisted in their undertaking. If you are unsure of your next move or what action to take. This is Mars being in your sign, right? Um, creating perhaps some emotional conflict in terms of um, making choices or decisions around certain actions. Ask the Ascendant Masters for guidance and assistance. Trust that things are working out for your highest good. Be courageous. Live your life with enthusiasm and optimism, safe in the knowledge that you are well blessed, loved, and supported in all that you do. So live your life with joy, passion, and purpose as this will manifest your true desires. And it says be prepared to expand and increase your spiritual development and awareness. All right. And Cancers, I have to say that so much of the astrology and the psychic messages that have been coming through for you on this channel speak to this right so taking a look at the uh 
video here about the Pluto and Aquarius and Saturn and Pisces. Transit is really helpful in addition to the um, ancestor advice and the recent March horoscopes. Um, so much has been happening related to your eighth house, which is all about spiritual awakening and um, uh, psychic development and your relationship to the supernatural and the ways that uh, higher knowledge related to these areas um, are important to your career and your continued personal and professional development. So <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Like this video and subscribe. Comment down below how this applies and stay tuned for more. Hello, dear Leos. Happy April 2023. So I have to start off by saying that the theme of your channeled messages and celestial insight for this month is the shock value and moving in mystery. Okay. And I have to say that, um, I could not help but chuckle when I was doing your reading. Um, I was chuckling because it's all very witchy and, um, you know, it's about you really making some executive decisions and using shock value and mystery um, at your disposal, right? But also in some really, really important ways, right? And so this astrology is about shining a light on publishing launches, tours, travel, link-ups, and rewards, and recognition in your career, given that we will have the sun, um, Venus, Mercury, the North Node, Uranus, all of these... Um, sort of celestial bodies and planetary movements in your 10th house of career. While we have had the sun, Jupiter, right, um, in your ninth house, and we have Pluto now in your seventh house of partnerships and commitments, marriage, and Saturn now in your eighth house, which is all about mystery, secrets, the law of attraction, right? Losses and gains and finances and financial literacy, taxes, and being mindful because shared assets are on the line, being mindful about how much you own, owe, and share with others, right? And so um, more than anything, this astrology is about the mysteriousness of what professional moves you are making and will make next, right? And the potential sort of upcoming gains from these changes that you've made in your partnerships and the upcoming gains from you beginning a new venture or a level up in your career, right? And these gains being financial in the form of blessed new connections and expanded market reach. And um, you're being tight-lipped, right? You're being tight-lipped. And like I said, um, you know, Pluto and Saturn moving now into your seventh and eighth houses are all about you transforming, stabilizing, and being really strategic about understanding, increasing, and protecting your assets, right? And continuing to grow your financial literacy and discernment so that you can renegotiate the terms of your relationships in your best interests and, you know, with those who have shared interests, right? And for some of you, it is absolutely about ending important romantic and business relationships while beginning and deepening others, right? Based on how you and your life have transformed so deeply and based off of um, any goals that you have for yourself. We have the North Node in your 10th house, right? Which is all about sort of dreams and goals, milestones that you're reaching toward. Um, and <laughs> what's I'm telling you, I can't help but laugh because it's some really witchy stuff here. Okay. <laughs> um, and not, not in a bad way, but it's like, 
you know, that eighth house, when I was, when I was pulling the cards and when I was just channeling the messages, okay, these are the, these are the just sort of stream of conscious <laughs> messages and words that came through. I got, um, I got black magic. I got sorcery. I got shock value. I got moving in mystery. I got wait and see. I got big reveals, right? Capitalizing off of the currency of shock value and mystery. And also letting people think that you're resting on your laurels when you're not. Like you're actually still making big moves, doing big reveals and capitalizing off of this being a great time to launch new projects and see rewards from any of your ventures, right? It, also in relationship to the astrology, right? Um, and it's here in the cards, right? We got cornucopia of blessings. We got, we got the high priestess here and, and the seven of, of, of pentacles and the death card and the moon, right? This is all about mindfulness, discernment, secrecy, privacy, NDAs, discretion, you know, like just handling business really. Um, and with Mars in the 12th house too, this could also absolutely be about uh, secret enemies, secret competition, right? And you maybe having some distrust and um, even awareness about secret enemies and comp secret competitions, you know, in whatever industry or whatever it is that you're doing, right? And about you doing what you need to do to protect your interests, right? And that includes the law of attraction, mastering the art of mystery and, and shock value and all of these things, right? <laughs> and um, so that's definitely what I see here. So your message is pretty short and sweet, but I will say that you should absolutely look at the other readings on the channel. One of the, the main themes of the message for March for you was absolutely about, um, you know, sort of being on the precipice of making a huge decision, um, parting some sort of big exit. Um, there being, potential irreparable damage in certain relationships, uh, leap of faith before it's too late. Like these were the sort of messages that came through for your March astrology. And that obviously is pertinent to this one as well. Um, because that was all related to the energies of, um, you know, beginning this, this new energetic shift that we have just entered in. Right. Um, where, these sorts of considerations um, are important for a long term, for the long term, right? The long term success of anything. Um, so definitely check out that message. There was so much in that message, so many different scenarios for those of you in the Leo Collective. Um, and, you know, something about people trying to leave relationships needing to leave relationships, maybe escaping violence, um, distance in relationships, wondering if there's irreparable damage in relationships and taking leaps of faith. Like, And then another reason, another reading that I got for you all here on the channel too, which was your overall 2023 spiritual advice with messages from your ancestors, also was about this major theme of needing to truly heighten and master your discernment because of there potentially being some uh, dis distrust with people who you work with. And uh, it was all a, like, there's, there's some really good, good, good shit in that reading, <laughs> just to be honest. Um, and I don't remember all of it, but I do know that it, it stuck out. Um, and this is a new channel, so it certainly hasn't gotten the amount of views and it's just really important. I hope that it reaches those who need it, right? So check those out. And to wrap up your reading, we have an angel number message for you. And that message, that number is the number 1022. Okay, and this reads... 
Number one is all about assertiveness. It's about striving forward and new beginnings, inspiration, motivation, independence, action, positivity, and achieving success. It's about creating your reality and experiences with your thoughts and beliefs. It's about stepping out of your comfort comfort zone and stepping towards new directions and opportunities. And it's also about developing your spiritual aspects and connecting with your higher self and freeing yourself from limitations. And number two, um, in general, is about decisiveness. It's about diplomacy. It's about charm. It's about partnerships and relationships, cooperation, consideration, receptivity and love, balance and harmony, and living your life path and soul mission. <laughs> I can't help but laugh. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't help but laugh because some of you are like playing the girls, all right? Some of you are like playing the game, okay? I'm calling you out, okay? But also keeping your secret, all right? Wish you the best. Some of you are like... <laughs> some of you are playing the game. Some of you know that it's people around you who are... Cannot be trusted. They fake smile in your face, okay? And, you know, you got to be tight-lipped, right? You you have to play coy, right? And this is really interesting because cancer had... Cancer's reading was focused in some ways about them being a dark horse, right? In many ways, people not having expected them to be able to be pulling out the success and racking up in the ways that they have been doing, right? Um, whereas with you all, it's a little different, right? It's, it's related, but it's a little different because it's like people know what you're capable of. It's not this situation of like people having doubted you and, and, and what you are capable of and, you know, that being to your advantage and like, you know, you being able to shock people and all of this, this is like, no, people know <laughs> what you're capable of and um, the success and potential and everything, right, that you have. But you're just like, okay, wait and see. You know what I'm saying? Moving in mystery, okay, and using that to your advantage to protect your assets. And Using your discernment, utilizing the law of attraction. I'm sorry I'm telling your business, but if you don't know, and if you haven't tapped into this yet, then the Ancestor 2023 advice is also about you needing to get hip on game, okay? <laughs> you, need to, you need to understand, right? And some of that is about, okay, we got 333 on the clock, all right? Take this, take this. This is coming from the great mother. This is coming from the divine. Okay, this is coming from Saturn. Okay, take this, all right, um, as a sign that there could be important ego and shadow work for you to do so that you are able to heighten your discernment in ways where you can use all of this to work for you because with if you when you're when you've done your shadow work you don't let praise get to you too much to the point where you can be easily manipulated by somebody just blowing smoke up your ass right and letting them manipulate you because ego and buying in buying into and even being bought by compliments is one about insecurity but also um, that being a particular wound that people can play on and manipulate you to get you to do whatever, right? Just because they tell you something nice, right? And you take that and it, and it boosts your confidence so much or you take their advice, right? And this could be people trying to manipulate you, right? And then on the other hand, it's like if, you're, if your confidence, it's like it's both things, right? You can't, you, your head can't be too big and then you also can't be out of touch with reality about your worth, right? And this is also what Saturn in the eighth house is about. You got to do shadow work, heal self-worth to optimize your net worth. Here we go. We're bringing it back all around. And this is what Mars in the 12th house 
is teaching you and that's pertinent for you with regards to you um, navigating any situations, negotiations, contracts, and networks where you got to be on the, you got to play defense. All right. You just got to play defense. Got to play defense, girls. Sorry, guys, everybody. You got to play defense. <laughs> and there's just, so look at those readings, right? And in general, too, this, there was a, a message about um, getting out of things before there is irreparable damage, right? So if you have shared, shared assets with someone, um, or, or even are in some sort of like toxic and abusive relationship, right? Um, there was a message there about needing to build up your finances and your financial literacy so you could escape something. Um, so all of this is still kind of showing up and playing in the cards here, um, in all of these different ways. It came out a bit more uh, succinctly in the other readings. So there may still be some some tidbits of advice in those other readings that um, obviously I can't recall in the moment. Um, but yeah, I hope that this helps. <laughs> um, let me, look, I got distracted. Let me finish your angel number message here. Okay. So angel number 1022 is about staying focused on your highest ideals and expectations as the angels and universal energies work behind the scenes, helping you to manifest your wants and needs and goals and desires into reality. This, this is also about y'all working behind the scenes. To manifest, to manifest. I'm sorry. Be patient as some of the pieces of the puzzle are yet to fall into place just yet. But know that everything happens in divine time and you will know when the timing is right for you. I told y'all some of y'all doing shock value and wait and, you know, releasing things in divine timing. It says learn the lessons of patience and use it to your advantage as there is much to be done and achieved in the interim. Angel number 1022 is a powerful message that you are to show initiative, step out of your comfort zone when you know it is time to take new directions and or begin new projects and ventures that you have been wanting to do for a long time now. This angel number 1022 encourages you to release your fears and apprehensions and get on with pursuing your passions and purpose. It asks you to be aware of the energies you put out to the universe and ensure that they are of a positive and uplifting nature. Stay on a positive path and use your natural skills, talents, and abilities to their utmost for the benefit of yourself and others. Use positive affirmations and visualizations to enhance energies and draw them towards you. A lot of y'all some witches. The more you focus on the positives, the quicker they are manifested into your reality. <laughs> Celebrate your own life and seek out peace balance, harmony, and joy in each moment. Celebrate each day and the opportunities it brings to you. Okay, so dear Leos, definitely like this video, subscribe, and for your gratitude practice, join us here every day. Check out the shorts tab for our daily grace motivation meditations. Continue your um law of attraction and gratitude practices with us amplify the positive vibrations and have an incredible april and uh, check out the other readings here for additional tidbits of advice hello dear virgos so your celestial insight focuses on this message of how they didn't see it coming but you did see it coming <laughs> and this being related to um, your psychic ability, um, but also your ability to give expert advice about something, right? Or just something of that sort. So this astrology, the astrology of March and the astrology of April is all about crisis response and resolving some sort of crisis 
um, but also dynamics of care and harmony in uh, a marriage, any intimate and professional relationships um, having to do with pregnancy and childbirth or maternal care, child care, medical operations, or you being in the helping professions, right? As a helping professional, right? And you negotiating contracts, boundaries, um, but also experiencing psychological transformations from trauma that you experience or witness and transformation of your beliefs related to these experiences or outside knowledge and wisdom from higher education and personal research or even intuitive revelation or spiritual awakening that you experience, okay? Any sorts of crises or opportunities for renegotiating something or getting care or um, getting expert advice or building a connection with someone, everything that is happening in your life right now is very faded and very mystical. There's a lot of psychic activity happening. You have the sun and Jupiter and all of these kinds of massive <laughs> conjunctions happening in your eighth house that is related to all of these areas, but also related to spiritual awakening and psychic experience and psychological transformation. I have to say that the main message that I was getting, right, where I told you that theme of they didn't see it coming, but you did see it coming. I'm getting a really clear message here about having an important and psychic revelation and even an instance where you see a revelation come to pass, where there was something that you had some sort of psychic instinct about, um, maybe even a gut instinct, a warning about something, or even some sort of revelation or prophecy where others didn't see it coming, but you did see it coming and then it came to pass, right? And it shocks you, maybe it shocked others, um, or you realizing the power of your expert advice or insight about something, right? Or where you receive expert advice from someone else um, that, blows your mind, right? And that opens your mind to something, right? There's so much about you growing confident in a, in a growing psychic ability or some sort of expertise that you're honing, right? Because of all of this energy and even this eclipse this month happening in your house of psychic gifts and crisis response, right? And um, so I want to say too that like, if you have any sorts of inklings like gut feelings about doing something or even not doing something or even some sort of like hunches about uh, natural disasters or some sort of disaster um, some sort of warning trust it and go with it okay this month right truly go with it and in general to your um message for March was also about um, if you are experiencing any sort of crises this month to definitely seek expert advice um, because you will receive faded helpers to help you resolve anything that you're facing, right? So there is definitely a sort of focus on big partnerships, publishing, and travel physical travel, but also even travel to new heights um, in your career with the sun, Venus, and Mercury in the North Node all being in your ninth house. And then Venus also moving into your house of uh, career, right? And so there's definitely been, been this sort of reoccurring message um, in your sort of horoscopes and psychic messages about um, your professional communication and negotiation skills um, continuing to be tested and um, how 
any certain tests or growth that you've been facing in these areas of professional communication and negotiation really informing and shaping your contracts in your career and your outcomes in a really profound way, right? And so definitely the universe has been supporting this sort of long journey of you um, growing in this way, but also understanding how different and certain schools of thought, wisdom traditions, well-being practices, belief systems, and this professional communication and negotiation skills can both inform and successfully shape your contracts and career and ensure better outcomes, safety, um, boundaries, balance, and well-being in your personal life and the lives of people that you care about or even care for if you are in the helping professions in some way or if you employ people or work with people, right? And, um, you know, your well-being, your conflict resolution skills have a direct effect on your professional results. And um, you've been coming to see that. And this month is about resolve and coming to some really important agreements related to um, collaborations. It's about, um, continuing to, uh, experience career milestones and have these really transformative experiences, right? That just kind of blow your mind and even open your mind, right? And that is what the astrology is, um, sort of doing, right? In a sort of divine and purposeful way. And, Definitely because we have Mars in your 11th house, I'm definitely getting that um, you could definitely have success with collaborations, travel, integrating or combining different talents, niches into something unique for your career. Um, and this is all about you being a sort of multi-talented creative entrepreneur. Um, and that is reflected in the cards. But I'm definitely seeing something where you get some sort of instinct this month or psychic insight that helps you to avert a crisis. Or even, again, similar to the message from last month, you get some really helpful advice um, or some sort of divine faded resource um, sent your way that really helps you to resolve something really powerfully, right? And that makes a big impact on you, right? For the long term. And... <laughs> I'm also getting the, I also got the, the word like neuroplasticity. There's something here about neuroplasticity being, um, uh, heightened for you with whatever it is that you do, or as you continue to learn about new things, um, exercise your creative abilities, partake in artistic and creative things, um, that get you out of your comfort zone, continue to push past your comfort zone, um, and open your mind while the universe is also orchestrating a lot of things to open your mind <laughs> and to even heighten your neuroplasticity in terms of increasing your discernment and your psychic awareness, right? Um, in terms of you being in the helping professions or even in psychology, um, neuroplasticity might be something that uh, could be useful for you um, just as a channeled message and where you will know how this applies, right? Um, and you understanding maybe the relationship between creativity, neuroplasticity, and psychic awareness and psychic intelligence and mental health <laughs> because they are all related. And I've just been getting for you all for a very long time that some of you are therapists in training or something, right? So that is your message. And um, I'm going to wrap it up here with your channeled angel number message and the channeled angel number message that came through for you there were a few there is 1111 right which is also this message about um 
developing intuitive awareness, the power of your mind, um, and also about new beginnings um, and insights. And then there is also the angel number um, 333, right? Which is also about um, ascendant masters, master teachers. So again, emphasizing this connection in the message where there is something about faded teachers who can impart wisdom to you, you growing in your mastery um, or to, in terms of having expertise as a teacher in whatever it is that you do or mastery in a craft. And then also um, your psychic awareness growing because that's, you know, it's like it's connected to all of these themes in your message, right? And then um, there was also the angel number 1044. And that is the one that I want to read for you. Okay. And I, I have to say, like, even doing your reading here, it feels... Like it feels chaotic, like mentally, like there are so many different connections. It's like, it's like, I, I feel quite literally the essence of the energy in terms of like having like, uh, synapses just like going off in my brain. Right. And, and, and different brain circuits and, Things being awakened, you know, newly, and that being something that that being symbolic of like this is what is happening for you, right? And that is absolutely a sort of like sort of picture of the energy that is really characteristic of what having Jupiter. Um, making conjunctions with Chiron and Mercury and the sun in the eighth house. Like it's all about, it's like, it's blowing. It's about blowing your mind. It's about opening your mind. And it is absolutely about activating <clears throat> your, uh, your third eye and your crown chakras and neuroplasticity. All right. So, <laughs> Man, like just just tapped into this energy, right? And and maybe you all also like continuing to be blown away by like, you know, it's like you all are being blown away by the things that are happening, the synchronicities that are happening in your life, like all of it. And it's like it's not a coincidence. It's like that is what this particular astrology is doing on purpose. All right. So ten forty four is about um miraculous answers and solutions appearing as you need them. <laughs> and I want to, I want to also tell you all that, um, UA light celestial insight is about the incredible multifaceted way that I channel through the alignment of the messages in the cards and the stars and also angel numbers. And just in general, all of the other psychic ways that the divine sends messages to me. And with that, I get the angel numbers at the top of the message and I don't read them for myself or for you until at the end, <laughs> just so we can see, <laughs> so that we can see, right, that this is how psychic mediumship and everything else works, right? Okay. So that is what 1044 is about. It says, expect miraculous answers and solutions to appear as you need them. It says you are especially gifted in many ways and you have great creativity and communication skills. Use these talents to enhance your own life and to uplift, support, and serve humanity as your soul dictates in productive and creative ways. And this is listen to your intuition as your angels are ushering positive energies to Board and around you. That's, you know what? There it is. <laughs> it says, acknowledge the determination, discipline, and hard work you have put into your endeavors in the past and know that they will bring long term benefits and rewards to your life. All right. Take heart that your efforts have been well worth your while and you are encouraged to keep up the great work you have been doing. 
All right, as you continue to manifest expected and even unexpected results. All right. And yeah, even choosing to read that number as opposed to the other ones, right? It's like, just, just follow the guidance, right? Just follow the guidance, all right? From me to you, from spirit to you, Ashe. I hope that April 2023 is a uh, powerful and positive month for you. Definitely take a look at the other readings on the channel here for you as they contain additional supportive advice and insight. And like this video and subscribe to the channel. Take care. Hello, dear Libras. So your message for April 2023 is pretty short and sweet. And there was just this overarching clear message here that April 2023, especially with this full moon happening in your sign, this big eclipse and all of these Jupiter conjunctions happening in your sister sign, Aries, which is your house of partnerships, marriage, and committed relationships, that there could be a big breakup for you this month. Um, and just the hard truth, facing the hard truth about a necessary big breakup, right? Um, and maybe that even being public in some way. Um, and, you know, there's just this overarching sort of focus on romantic and professional relationships, but also your desires, right? Um, given that we have Venus also entering into your ninth house, which is all about sort of um, your desires for the future, right? Um, and this is a time of really considering what you want, your legacy, um, and the quality of your workplace or collegiate dynamics and even professional and romantic relationships to be. And it's a time of ending and beginning and troubleshooting issues in any committed love, co-parenting, creative and business partnerships, and just reimagining and revising projects, right? Romantically, um, this could be a time where someone new could grab your attention and spark a rise in your libido or, you know, really generate um, some creative inspiration for you that then w inspires you to want to end a romantic or even creative relationship that you are in now, right? And there's just this overall energy of being unable to avoid the hard truth anymore in terms of there being any incompatibilities in relationships, right? Your seventh house is being eclipsed. So it's about whether you it's about there perhaps having always been an opportunity for you to have made this change, but that certainly external circumstances in the universe are orchestrating circumstances that are making it like impossible to ignore the need to express a hard truth um, or, you know, sort of part ways in some way. Because, and, and, and it's like, it seems to be that because there has been, um, Pluto has been in your fourth house, now in your fifth, Saturn is now in your sixth. It's like these changes have to be made. And then the sun and Venus and Mercury retrograde and the north node are all in your eighth house where this is all about um, shared resources and um, having to make some sort of changes in your relationships where there are shared assets or resources or even children and pets involved, right? So, and that could be the reason why perhaps you have waited so long to make certain changes, right? Um, because of how it could affect these things, how it could affect assets, resources, um, children or pets are involved, right? Or in the middle of certain creative business partnerships or even romantic relationships. And so um, it's definitely about, you know, 
sharing your secrets, secrets being revealed, sharing hard truths, um, because something or someone else has your heart. Uh, that's also what I'm getting here. And it says, you know, the sort of channeled messages that I got, it's like there's emotional distance, there's maybe even emotional dishonesty, creative differences, um, maybe some issue of hiding behind someone else's vision or idea, um, or maybe even that being a part of creative differences, right? And this is all courtesy of Venus being in the ninth house and Mars in the house of career and public reputation. And the card that I pulled related to the past energy that um, is perhaps influencing all of this for you is the, um, the star card, right? And then the queen of pentacles, right? So again, about high hopes and expectations and even money or shared assets having been involved that influenced um, maybe how long you have stayed in certain relationships, right? Um, but the spiritual lesson here uh, is definitely about trusting intuition, especially in business. That is the spiritual lesson for all of this that you are experiencing. And the advice is, you know, to follow your destiny and to don't stay in anything toxic um, or where there are these deep differences in values and desires, right? Um, and, and, and creative differences. Don't stay in anything toxic just for the money. This is definitely about cutting your losses um, and that it's not worth the fight, right? That's definitely what I'm getting here with the seven of wands and the devil and the knight of pentacles um, and this whole bottom row of cards here with all of these cards being in reverse, um, especially attachment and then financial constraints, right? It's like, don't let uh, pride, ego, or worries about finances um, make you put more effort into something that isn't going to lead you anywhere, right? It isn't aligned with your true desires and destiny. Um, and that is reflected here by the wheel of fortune, right? And I have to be honest, for some of you, it is about, um, you being on the receiving end of some sort of hard truth, right? Or even being confronted about some sort of dishonesty, um, you being brought the conflict and maybe even being the source of some sort of conflict, right? Um, you know, these energies could, could play out either, either way. I'm just the messenger here, right? Um, but there's definitely something here about, uh, dishonesty, truths coming out and having to cut your losses, right? Um, because of some creative differences, some differences in desires, some incompatibility, um, or even a lawsuit, right? Because we have Mars in your 10th house. This is Mars and Cancer in your 10th house. This is a uh, sort of <laughs> transit that quite literally spells out um, some sort of workplace dispute or even a uh, professional lawsuit, right? Um, that has to do with some hard truth, right? Something that was discovered, right? And so the spiritual advice, you know, is to absolutely just take the lesson, um, see anything that happens in terms of ending relationships, beginning new relationships as being so divinely aligned and to teach you a lesson about, you know, high discernment and um, ethics and because this is your sister's sign, right? So anything that is happening, it is absolutely about eliminating a shadow aspect and course correcting something in a karmic way, right? That is just the, the truth of it, right? So see everything as happening for your highest good, 
regardless of what you lose, um, focus on what it is that you have an opportunity to gain. A lot of times we have to lose something um, to make space for something better. We have to, especially when Aries, uh, any astrology with Aries is involved. A lot of times it is about learning lessons the hard way, literally through bumping your head, right? In order to know better and do better. All right. So we're going to wrap up your reading with the angel number 1055. Okay. So 1055 is about the freedom to live and serve your soul mission as your intuition and inner knowing dictates. Okay. The number one is about going forward with um, beginning new projects or ventures. It's about inner strength and tenacity. And it's about going forward with courage. And the number zero is about developing one's spiritual aspects, right? And is considered to represent the beginning of a spiritual journey and highlights the uncertainties that that may entail. It also suggests that you listen to your intuition and higher self as this is where you will find your answers. And to, I just got to say here that um, these first few cards are all about that. You know, this, this, uh, the very first card here is all about uh, your third eye chakra and that being in reversed, right? Where then there's the yin yang symbol and the knight of swords, right? And then the sun in the page of wands. So this is about, you know, certain instincts um, and sort of psychic awareness and maybe even a sort of balance um, sort of awareness or intention haven't been missing, you know, or, or there haven't been some sort of uneven balance in terms of the psychic awareness or even give and take in terms of any relationships involved. Right. And that now being revealed and, um, sparked now that is about, helping you to develop your spiritual aspects, right? Some sort of spiritual journey, right? That begins for you now, okay? And then five is this number that is all about making major life changes. It's spontaneity, life lessons learned through experience, making important choices, personal freedom, auspicious opportunities, and being true to yourself, all right? And so... This number is about the timing. It says, timing is right for a new venture project and or direction. Do not allow others to deter or hinder you in any way once you have made your final choice or decision. Only you know your true heart's desires and soul calling. So listen to your intuition and look to new directions and opportunities with an open mind and optimism. And it says, have the courage to be true to yourself, live your passions and purpose. Take charge of your own life, do things your own way, and make positive changes to benefit yourself and those around you. Although you may fear the unknown, your angels ask that you trust that these changes will be to your long-term benefit and advantage. A happy outcome and results follows positive expectations. So stay positive and optimistic about these impending changes and you will find that all will go smoothly. All right, dear Libras, I wish you the best. Definitely like this video and subscribe and check out the remaining videos here on the channel for additional UA light celestial insight. Take care. Hello, dear Scorpios. So your overall message or theme from the stars and the cards is about new commitments and career direction, right? And there being blossoming abundance coming your way this month and beyond. We have quite literally your sixth house of career um, experiencing the light of the sun and all of these conjunctions with Jupiter uh, and Mercury and the sun and also Venus, Mercury in the north node and the sun also all traveling through your seventh house of uh, partnerships, right? And commitments, right? And maybe you finding new opportunities in work, right? After there perhaps having been some uncertainty and also a very real 
need for you to let go of any previous um, professional positions uh, that were not in alignment anymore, that were um, dysfunctional even in terms of the networks um, or the sort of collegial dynamics, right? Just all of these different things where it's like, the universe, the divine, all of the messages that have been coming through for the Scorpio Collective has been about this need for you to just let it go, right? So that you can make space for these new things to come in, right? And, you know, the astrology this month is all about these new commitments and opportunities in your um, creative and entrepreneurial professional life, um, that will stabilize, right? Your material and financial life while it also is about um, maybe bringing a bit more play and lightheartedness into your life and um, making your life a bit more stress-free. And the astrology just really points to new work opportunities for you. Um, maybe new opportunities that really allow you to explore your um, your spirituality, to even uh, work with children, um, to work in nature or work remotely, to just do something creative, spiritual and entrepreneurial. You've just been really encouraged um, by the astrology lately and even in these cards here, as well as um, the message last month to choose peace, right? To let things leave you and to put yourself out there to create and take advantage of new opportunities that are truly divinely aligned and more divinely inspired. And for some of you, this might be about you needing to reassess your ideas of success. Some of you may feel like um, you walking away from something that seemed more stable um, in and that seemed to be this sort of like ideal pinnacle of success. You walking away from that makes you feel like some sort of failure. But this is about that not being the case, right? If you look at the cards here, it's about uh, the nine of wands in reverse and the page of cups here in reverse is about you sort of releasing the fight, not holding on to something, not fighting for something just for um, the material or financial stability when ultimately it doesn't actually even feed your soul, right? And the queen of swords here and the four of wands here is about, you know, making new decisions, right? Making new partnerships that will then also actually still lead you to your wishes and your desires, right? Um, but that is about you just letting go of some other preformed idea and the expectations that you had with other things to provide you the particular kind of success that you wanted or that you feel that you need or that you thought you needed, right? And so what I want to do is read this victory card for you in reverse, what it means when it's reversed. And so it's about um, a delay or reversal and a hope for outcome, right? Whether it's in personal change or external achievement, success may have been eluding you for some time, but don't despair. You may need to restructure things, reevaluate or release one specific outcome and set your sights on another. And it says, whatever is going on externally, remember that the equanimity of peaceful surrender can often be your biggest victory of all. And quite literally, the the message that I had for your reading last month and just all the other messages that have been coming through for you, even in terms of the overall 2023 ancestor advice video has been about this sort of the universe sort of screaming to you, like to peacefully surrender, to let things go, right? So that other things can appear right? So you can make space, okay? And so we're going to wrap up your reading with your angel number message that came through. And your angel number message is the number 1233. And so the number one is about 
creation and new beginnings, progress and motivation, striving forward and achieving success. It's also about creating your own realities with your beliefs, your thoughts and actions. And then the number two is about partnership and relationships. It's about diplomacy and happiness and fulfillment. And then the number three uh, is also about creativity and self-expression. And 33 is a master number that is about the ascendant masters being around and assisting you when asked. They help you to focus on the divine spark within yourself and others. And this is about having the ascendant masters and just your spiritual helpers assisting you with manifesting your wants and desires. But ultimately helping you to find peace, clarity, and love within. And I just want to say that, um, yes, that has been a sort of repeating message that the things that you are being drawn away from are ultimately to lead you toward more peace, clarity, and love, and these sort of more positive dynamics being infused in your daily life, right? instead of struggle and dysfunction, all right? And so 1233 is a message that, you know, the angels, the ascendant masters, your spirit team, they are with you. They are guiding and assisting you along your divine life paths. And they ask you to maintain a positive attitude, positive thoughts and expectations in regards to the direction of your life. Have faith and trust that your present course is the right one for you and is in line with your soul mission and life purpose. Stay strong in your convictions and listen to your intuition and inner wisdom. I also want to say, right, staying strong in your convictions is not the same as you continuing to hold on to something longer than you need to. All right, you all are fixed to water and that is often something that can be your downfall, right? So things are being shaken up in your life on purpose for you to let go of something that you may be holding on to for the wrong reasons um, and or that just is not aligned and in your best interest anymore. So it says, have faith in humanity as a whole and the future of our world. Your light working abilities and life mission are to be utilized for the good of all. Keep a positive attitude about yourself, others, and the world to manifest peace, love, and harmony. Send blessings and positive energies to others and the environment and expect blessings in return. And have the courage to live your dreams with faith and trust in yourself the angels and the universal energies. All right, dear Scorpios. So many blessings of abundance to you and of clarity to you. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, and check out the remaining videos for more helpful UA Light Celestial Insight. Take care. Hello, dear Sag. So I have to say, dear Sages, um, this message for you this month is really short and sweet and it's about you having mental health breakthroughs and about you letting people pour into you as your advice, right? <laughs> um, the astrology highlights romance and creative projects. It highlights um, children, pets and play, cooperation, uh, boundaries and harmony and relationships with employees and colleagues and love partners, and it's about your health, about your mental health, and it's about work-life balance. And it's really about you bringing more fun, play, and improve mental health and cooperation into your life through communicating openly with your colleagues, right? Um, about what it is that you need, right? In order to be your best self, do your best work, right? And it's also about you, um, Developing a sort of improvement with your consistent use of the supportive tools in your daily routines, whether that is the practices that you have learned, right, or um, the support systems that you have that you can lean on and that you should lean on, right? Um, and there was a message for you last month. I'm going to definitely direct you to take a look at your March horoscope that was here. It was absolutely about this need to um, just communicate with uh, colleagues about what it is that you need and with the cards here and the astrology of april it's about the same sort of the same sort of uh message here letting people pour into you right and um 
not letting any sort of expectations that uh, you won't receive that support stop you from seeking the sort of help and the sort of help and cooperation that you need, right? Around um, things that you might need for your health, right? There was, just look at that video for sure. <laughs> There's also something here, right, about uh, maybe you experiencing some really viral success with any creative projects online in terms of sales um, and in terms of um, any sort of social media or publishing um, projects that you have, right? We have Pluto in your third house and we also have um, Saturn in your fourth house. And so there is something here where it's like you feel pressure to have a really good rapport with people that you work with. And you're worried that if you are honest about any sort of health or mental health or even like acclimation challenges that you've been having and that you need support around that that could then somehow have people think less of you or even jeopardize your opportunities right and that not being the case right so again let people pour into you seek the help that you need and believe in yourself right believe in yourself and get some sun definitely with this ten of cups card here all right and to be honest about what it is that you need um, so that you can also be an effective uh, team player, right? And maintain harmony in any workplace dynamics and the successful completion of any goals and any projects, okay? So definitely like this video, subscribe to the channel, and check out the remaining videos because there have been some really special messages for you that I hope reaches you um, in divine timing and offers you some support. All right. Take good care of yourselves. Hello, dear Capricorns. So this month's astrology is all about you really exuding this really beautiful new personal confidence and getting a burst of creative inspiration. In general, the month's astrology is about new beginnings right, in your home and family life and important communications to heal and reconcile or make peace with some trauma from a core experience or a relationship that had a huge impact on you. The emphasis on home and uh, essentially having the sun and Jupiter make all of these connections in your fourth house of home, while we also have the sun and Venus and the north node and Mercury and Uranus all in your fifth house that is about, you know, your relationship with um, your personal creativity, your personal um, sense of self and even romance, your sense of feeling attractive and, uh, and confident and creative. It's like this could also be about home taking a deeper meaning and being about a deeper personal transformation in terms of feeling more at home and confident in your body and femininity and your sense of identity even after healing some sort of core wounds and even trauma connected to your ancestry and your heritage, um, particularly making peace even with being someone who sort of shocks your family or others because you break with conventions and traditions in your family, um, maybe related to your gender or sexual identity, or your creative expression, or even your beliefs and your values right and so the cards definitely reflect that we have the sun essentially showing up twice here in your reading right um and also the sacral chakra right which is also connected to healing core wounds while the sun is also um about a sort of newfound confidence, right, <laughs> in yourself and creative inspiration, okay? And so your message is really short and sweet, and it, it also um, aligns with the uh, message that came through for you last month. 
and also the overall 2023 spiritual advice message that came through for you. So definitely take a look at those here on the channel. And we are going to wrap up your reading here with your angel number message that came through. The angel number that came through for you is 1244. All right, so we're going to read that. And the number one in general is about vibrations of optimism, motivation and activity, creation, new beginnings and starting afresh. It's about striving forward and progress and attainment and happiness. And it tells you that you create your own reality with your thoughts, beliefs and actions. And then the number two is about balance and harmony, cooperation, devotion duty and service, and also partnerships and duality. And yes, these are all the themes here represented in the cards and the stars. All right, so we got the lovers here. And then um, number four is about willpower and effort. It's also about traditional values, stability and ability, patience and practicality, working diligently towards achieving goals. and. 1244 overall is a message from the angels to see yourself in a higher light as your true self and that your angels and your spirit team have been helping to boost your self-esteem and self-belief. So stay balanced, grounded, and focused, safe in the knowledge that your angels surround and support you as you serve your divine life purpose and path, and acknowledge the determination, discipline, and hard work you have put into your endeavors in the past, and know that they will bring long-term benefits and rewards to your life. You have shown great tenacity and initiative, so take heart that your efforts have been well worth your while and you are encouraged to keep up the great work you have been doing and give yourself permission to be all that you can be all right so i want you all to know that when doing your messages i typically uh do the astrology and then when i essentially get down to do the cards and to channel any sort of psychic intel. That is when I get your angel numbers at the top of the message. Before going through to read the cards, the angel numbers come through in combination with the sort of stream of downloads of all of the other psychic messages. And I set that aside. I take a note of it. And then I wait to read your uh, angel number message at the end of the reading for you and for myself, right? Um, to see how it all comes together. And it is all so aligned. And <clears throat> I want to say too that it could be really beneficial for you to take a look at the other messages that have come through for you, Capricorn, here on the channel. Um, they have been similar to this, but in more detail related to specific um key circumstances and scenarios that I also see reflected here in these cards, but that um have come together in a sort of generalized message, but you will find more, and I think deeper messages that resonate and that could be really helpful for you in the 2023 ancestor advice video that is here on the channel. And even in the video that was done for March and, um, especially looking at the Saturn in, uh, Pisces and the Pluto and Aquarius transit video here on the channel, given that you are ruled by Saturn and the Saturnian age was heavily affecting your personal and professional development where you are now sort of being reborn and showing yourself anew. And this is absolutely what the cards and even this angel number is uh, sort of reflecting here in terms of this sort of new rebirth that um, you are experiencing. And I want to also read the sun card here for you. As this sort of last... <laughs> um, message because this particular sun card speaks so much about um, creativity, right? Um, and new beginnings in a way that is just really specific, I think, for you and your life right now. So it says, the sun brings blessings to the earth. And this card pretends blessings in your own life. 
And just as the sun nurtures the earth, bringing new life in the spring and summer, this is your time for a new beginning, the onset of a nurturing, a new light in your life, the light of divine inspiration and personal growth. And this card marks a time of great creativity, bringing the culmination of an important new project, such as the birth of a baby or the writing or publication of a book or even the birth of a new you. And now is the time to put your energy into expressing your truth and vision. So visualize the light of divine love pouring into your heart and mind like the rays of the sun, bringing inspiration, growth, and abundant blessings. See the future you want to create and know that the sun is shining on your intentions now absolutely absolutely and also um the sort of um message about writing a book came through in i think maybe the saturn and pluto and aquarius reading so check check these all out right <laughs> they, they could have really good insights uh for you in this incredible new journey in your life right now so take good care like this video and subscribe have a beautiful april Hello, dear Aquarius. So April 2023 is sort of dynamic for you, I have to say. And the sort of overall message and theme for you um, is creative differences, shocking communications, and uh, potential vacations, but settling conflicts and setbacks, right? So that's a lot, right? But that is all that is reflected in the cards and the astrology, honestly. Uh, the astrology really shines a light on the areas of your professional writing, teaching, publishing of your projects, regardless of what industry you're in, maybe experiencing shocking communications with coworkers, um, there being uh, product development and shipping uh, related to fashion and other products that you develop, maybe even uh, fashion and appearance being a topic and what they reveal about you and your values, right? There's a message here about a new and improved authentic and original sense of voice um, that you're developing, right? That is unreliant on the influences of others, right? And about you like striking out on your own, but also there being uh, maybe a situation where you striking out on your own may have created a tension in uh, a partnership or a sort of I don't know, co-worker dynamic. There's something here about a tense working relationship and trying to move on from that tension. And I got that message in particular at 111, right? So there's definitely something here about trying to move on from a tense working relationship or from some sort of backlash um, that you experience related to something that you released, right? Something that may have been um uh controversial that's the word i'm looking for <laughs> but there's something here about having to sit on pins and needles or maybe having been sitting on pins and needles uh waiting for the outcome of something maybe a response related to a conflict maybe waiting to hear someone's truth or to express a truth but also even waiting to see the outcome or reception of your work right? Whether it's creative and performance-based or whether it's about waiting to see the sort of outcome of uh, a product launch, right? Or the sales of something. There's definitely something here about order fulfillment, about positive pre-orders and about products selling out, right? And there being success in business that potentially exceeds your expectations, right? And this could absolutely be about, you know, the sun being in your third house um, and also having these Jupiter conjunctions in that third house, right? And Saturn in your second house of money, right? And this is Saturn, that second house of money and values um, and all of these sort of like ecliptic energies in your third house, ruled by Aries, uh, being in the mix, influencing all of these different sorts of scenarios that I just mentioned. 
But in the cards here, we can definitely see that there is something also here about travel and work causing you to perhaps miss out on time with kids and pets. Um, and also you taking vacations, right? <laughs> um, so we have the, uh, the journey and the travel card and quite literally the man holding a heart, right? So those are the things that seem to be on the docket for you, but there's definitely something here about, um, moving forward confidently, um, with whatever happens, right? Taking things in stride and continuing to focus on all of your creative projects, right? And and your happiness, truly. And so I'm going to wrap up this reading with your angel number message that came through. And this is 455 has, is the angel number that came through. So the number four is about the work that you've been putting in towards achieving goals and aspirations. It's about hard work and effort, building solid foundations, system and order. It's about dependability, but it's also about honesty and integrity and our passion and drive. And that seems to have definitely come up here in the cards, right? And so um, five is about being true to yourself and living your life with personal freedom, making positive life choices and important changes and having versatility and being adaptable and resourceful. And 455 is a message that the life choices and changes you are experiencing have been brought about by the hard work you have put towards your life path and soul purpose. So look upon any dealings as blessings and recognize uh, new changes and opportunities as auspicious, right? Bringing auspicious circumstances for you. Listen to your intuition and guidance from the angels for directions and instructions as to next steps. Maintain a positive attitude about any new entering your life and keep an open mind as to opportunities presenting to you. Keep in mind that everything happens for a reason and not by chance. So even though the reasons for the changes um, may not be clear at this time, trust that all will fall into place for you. Certain changes have come about for you to break free from old restraints and constraints and freely pursue your soul mission and life purpose as a spiritual being. So this number assures you that you are being supported and guided by the angels through important and necessary changes. Trust and follow their guidance and know that all changes are for your highest good and they will lead to answers to your prayers. The lasting advice is it does not matter what other people say. It is how you react and what you choose to believe about yourself that matters. So do things the way that suits you and find your own niche. And of course, that is such Aquarian advice, right? Absolutely Aquarian advice. All right. So I hope that this was helpful. Leave a like and even a comment in terms of how this resonates for you and spread some light in the comments for your fellow Aquarians and subscribe to the channel and check out the remaining videos here for you as they contain additional advice and insights that could absolutely be helpful for you in this specific moment in time in your personal and professional and spiritual growth and evolution. Take care. Dear Pisces, happy April. Um, the overarching sort of key theme for you for April is about philanthropy and particularly experiencing continued growth and success in your finances and particularly um, thinking about how you might want to donate to a cause or disaster relief in some way with um, your money or by raising awareness, right? Um, in general, you are having the sun in all of these Jupiter conjunctions and this eclipse in your second house of money, but also your values, right? And so this is all about um, how you 
put your money where your mouth is in terms of having your spending reflect your values and your goals, but also the things that you care about. And I'm seeing that that is something that is coming through here in the cards, right? And it's like maybe making some important financial decision, um, maybe with relation to a contract or um, just something with regards to your venture and where you are maybe using your platform, but also your money to highlight a cause, right? That means something to you. This is also about you standing out in a crowded marketplace with whatever you offer as a service or a product or whatever it is that you publish, right? Um, there is something about um, continued growth in your finances and a venture and how they could continue to grow and expand from you launching um, campaigns, uh, products or books or courses or just whatever it is that you do, you emphasizing some social values with your, with what it is that you do for a living, right? Um, and this is something about, I just keep getting this overarching message about this decision to donate to a cause or disaster relief being important to you this month. Um, and maybe even something about a travel advisory. Um, if you are traveling for something related to what you do for work, um, I'm also getting this message too about potentially having mental health challenges um, this month and maybe even feeling guilty for having mental health challenges because you feel like because you are so blessed right or, or you have wealth or success in your life it doesn't mean that you can have a bad day right and um so there's definitely something here about transforming that kind of belief and your relationship to your mental health, right? And um, maybe mental health even being something that you are raising awareness of or um, the cause that you are supporting financially in some way with whatever it is that you do for a living. Those are the major, major sort of themes that I am getting for you. And I hope that it is a, a great month um, filled with good health and continued wealth and success. Take a care and like this video and subscribe to the channel and check out the remaining uh, videos here on the channel as well that offer some additional UA light celestial insight that could be really helpful for you in this particular moment in time in your journey.